Um, this is what the Lord gave me this morning. I was climbing out of bed. I didn't even hadn't opened my Bible yet or anything. <laughs> it began to deal with me, and the scriptures just kind of come. So we're going to look in the book of Luke today. Luke chapter 10 is where we're going to go. So turn there with me. God is good. Amen. Amen. We're going to look in Luke 10 and verse 38 to 42 is where we're going to look, if you want to turn there. And we all know the story. It's Mary and Martha. <coughs> okay. And um, in verse 38, he says, Now it came to pass as they went. That he, it's talking about Jesus and his disciples, okay? And he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Now we're going to read it right quick, and then we'll go back here. But he says, And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at the feet and heard his word. But Martha was encumbered about much serving. And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. That's powerful. That is powerful. How many of us are like Martha? We get burdened down and we get cumbersome down, right? We, we get over-occupied and busy. <laughs> but it's vital. It is our life. It is our soundness. It is who we are. If we live and move being in him, we've got to come to this place where just as Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, all right? We're going to see here. We're going to see these two sisters here as we look at this. Speaks of a two, about two laws. Okay. The old and the new. All right. It, it speaks of the natural and the spiritual. Okay. Um, the old covenant. The old and the new. Right? So what I'm saying, we've got two laws. Will we find Martha burdensome and troubled? The old law. Marry the new law. We find all these things going on here, okay? Now then, uh, let's. I want to just read out of Luke 12. I'm going to keep our place here because we're coming back. I'm going to read some scriptures here, okay? Luke chapter 12. Oops. Too far. And we're going to look at verse 23. Christ warns against earthly anxiety is what mine is titled. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit, or length of life? If ye then be not able to do that which is least, why take your thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, neither spin not. Yet I say unto you that Solomon, all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more, how much more, all right, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye that which you shall eat, or what you shall drink, neither be ye of a doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that you have need of these things, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
sell that you have, give alms, provide yourselves bags, of gold. But he goes on, he says, verse 34, where your treasure is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He says in one place you cannot serve God and mammon or God and money, and you can't be a servant to both. But I want us to see here, Mary and Martha, we're looking here at these two sisters. We're comparing what they what they do and how it comes out, okay? Um, I want to look in John chapter 6. We're going to come back here, so mark the place if you want. John 6 and 27. Well, let's just start. Let's just start in verse 25. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Uh, he, this is when he walks on the water, the previous verses. And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth or fades away or equals to death. All right. That's the labor. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You want to throw that in there? But labor not or work not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, the tree of life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Okay. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. We quote that quite a few times, but they said unto him, What sign are you going to show us then that we may believe? And he says, "Our fa They say, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, and he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said, This is what he said now. Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heavenly or from the highest realm, Okay. But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. All right. So we see here, he's saying, let, th these two sisters, okay. I'm going to go back to Luke chapter 10. All right. So we see Mary, we see Martha. All right. Let's go in here and read this. I want to try to connect it all together, what I'm trying to say, okay? In verse 39, she had a sister called Mary. So we're going to look at Mary first, which did sit at Jesus' feet and heard his word, okay? So she's sitting at his feet. She's hearing the word, okay? So this sitting at his feet, how I many you know it, it's uh, symbolic kind of like a teacher with a student, right? The student is there to learn, to listen, to hear, and to act on that that they hear, right? And activate that that they hear, okay? So we find here that Mary is hearing, okay? She sits at his feet. She's learning, okay? And what is she learning? She's, Jesus said, the words that I speak are spirit and life, okay? So you see here Mary. And Mary... Sitting at the feet, learning, listening, hearing, activating. All right. Let's look at Isaiah. Because we're going to look at Mary first. We're going to look at Martha. But Isaiah 1 and 19. He tells us, and we might quote this most of the time, but I want to read the whole thing so we get it all because we just usually quote the first little part of it. He says, if you be willing... And obedient. You shall eat the good of the land. Now what is Mary doing as she's sitting at the feet of Jesus? She's being willing. She's being obedient. Amen. She's hearing the word. Amen. It's activating something inside of her, right? As she's being still. As she's listening. As she's hearing. Okay. And you shall eat the good of the land. But, in verse 20, if you refuse and rebel, all right, 
You shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. All right. So we have here, it's showing us two sides, two sides of a coin. We, say, we see two things going on here. If you, if you uh, be willing and obedient, if you refuse and rebel, right? I want to show you the comparisons here. We're going back to Mary and Martha. Okay, so she, this, this hearing, she heard the word. It's 191, and it means you hear effectually. There again, like I'm saying, it's to put it into practice, and it's doing something inside as she's hearing, right? If, as we hear and learn, it changes us, doesn't it? Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen. And that's what's going on with Mary, okay? Um, and actually, um, to hear with obedience, basically, is what it's speaking of, effectually and with obedience. So this, um, as we're looking at obedience, obedience what he tells us it there again is willingness in one place he says obedience is better than sacrifice right Amen. obedience is better than sacrifice and you're going to see that here in this story too mary is setting with obedience she's listening she's hearing she's learning she's growing uh, spiritually amen martha what's going on with her martha is sacrifice right we got the sacrifice going on. I'm laboring and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. How many Christians, do we, you know, think that, well, if I just go do this, or, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do good things, okay? But we can't base our, uh, the strength of our Christianity on the things that we do. Amen? And a lot of people, a lot of Christians do. Well, if I go do this, I'm such a good Christian, and look at me, you know, and I'm doing good things, so, you know, God's going to, you know, really put me up on the pedestal and all these things, you know. Uh, basically, well, you know, like I say, not that we should we should do good things. We should, amen. But don't base how good a Christian we are on, you know, on the things that we have to do. <laughs> and not have to do, but the things we think we need to do. But we, we do do good things. Jesus did good things. Amen. He says there's none good but God. So we do good, amen. But what I'm trying to say is I want you to see the sacrifices, see, and the, and the offerings and the obedience. But if we look at obedience, obedience is a true test of our faith. Okay? It's a true test of faith. It really is. Amen? So um, I want to look, with these things in mind, look at Luke chapter 5. Bless you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Luke chapter 5, and we're going to look at, we're going to look at a story in chapter 5. Uh, let's see where we're going to stop. Well, let's just start in verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And as he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled, we have worked, we've labored at this, we've tried, and that it, we're just not getting anything. We've had taken nothing. Now think about it. Simon, he is a fisherman. That's his profession. He's good at this. I mean, he knows what he's doing, right? And, he worked hard. and he's working hard. He's not pulling in any fish. That's why they're washing the nets. They've given up. They quit. It, they tried and they tried, okay? We've taken nothing. Nevertheless, this is the key, okay? Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Obedience, right? <laughs> And when they had done this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish, and their net broke. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, whoo, so that they began to sink. Oh, see the abundance here when they obeyed the Lord. And they didn't go by the natural sense. Well, you know, Lord, we've been trying, and we've been trying, and there just is no fish tonight. It's just not working. You know, what? we've had the nets out. We've tried. There's, it's just not happening tonight. No. 
What did they do? They obeyed what Jesus said. Amen. They obeyed the word. And nevertheless, I will let down the net. And we find how, what it, they were so over blessed that both ships began to sink. That would be a lot of fish, wouldn't it? <laughs> and when Peter, Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished. Amen. And all that were with him at the draw of the fish that they had taken. They were so astonished. These were fishermen. They were astonished. All right. And we find on down that they forsook all and followed him. Amen. So what I want you to see here is what happens when you obey over, you know, being rebellious, not doing what he says. <laughs> uh, not, you know, we're not we're getting on to us. I'm trying to show us a principle here. All right. Two laws. Old covenant, new covenant, all right, all these things. Uh, let's look in Job 36, 11. 36. All right. We have by who? beginning to speak and to talk to Job. And he says in verse 11, he says, well, in verse 10, he says, He openeth also their ear, talking about God, to discipline and commanded that they return from their iniquity. And if, verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure, in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. All right? If they listen and obey, if they obey, all right, and serve, same thing same here going on here, right? First Samuel 15:22. So too far. Samuel King Samuel. Four Kings, right? First Samuel fifteen twenty two, this is where he talks about. And Samuel said, "Hath the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices?" First Samuel fifteen twenty two, as the as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. And then he goes on for sin is the uh, witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Okay, so we have got all these things going. Um, I'm going to go back to Mary and Martha back in the uh, book of Luke, chapter 10. All right? So, with all these things, we're going to kind of wrap it together here. And she said, okay, uh, Martha received him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary, uh, which we know we find sits at the feet of Jesus. Obedience, hearkening, because she's listening, she's learning, she's growing. Amen. She's doing these things. And we find then, um, and I, I, I tend to think that Jesus was married to Mary. Amen? Dan Brand brings out in his books, first the natural, then the spiritual. How does he, um, you know, how, how does he know to, you know, all things? He, su he suffered all things. Amen? And not that saying marriage is a suffering, but he, he, how can he know how everything to take care of everything if he didn't wasn't involved in everything, right? <laughs> so that makes sense. Anyway, I, I tend to believe that he did. I tend to believe that he was married to Mary. But we find that who got to marry Jesus, if that be the case? Mary, right? Intimacy. Speaks of intimacy, right? Um, closeness. Uh, lot, you know, that, that's going on. Uh, to know. To know personally. Amen? Um, who, who enters in to the Holy of Holies? The bride, right? The church, the bride. Intimacy, closeness, all right. Um, in Matthew chapter eleven, uh, seven. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter seven. We find that he shows us another key here. Matthew chapter seven. And he says in verse twenty-one, he says, "Now I never knew you," but he says. In verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. 
Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto you I never knew. Now knew is to speak of that intimacy and that closeness and that oneness and that unity. And how, does he, how do you get that? By sitting at the feet of Jesus, hearing the word, you know, spending time in the word, spending time in prayer so we can hear the voice, amen, and follow. As he says, I'm the great shepherd. and They that know my voice, they follow me, right? Amen. So that's what all these things are going on with Mary. All right. The interesting thing about Mary. All right. Let's look at some interesting, more, thi more interesting things about Mary. Matthew, uh, verse 27, or chapter 27. Matthew 27. Ma Matthew, chapter 27. Yep, 27. Yep. All righty. Yeah. We're going to find Mary. Okay. And he says in verse 55, And many women were there beholding afar off, all right, which followed Jesus from Galilee. We find here that it's going to talk about Mary. Mary's the one, Mary's one of the ones that followed after Jesus. All right. She followed and many women were there, beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Josie, uh, Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. So we find here Mary followed after Jesus, right, from Galilee, or from the, Re from the revelation of God, okay? John chapter 20. Kind of throwing in quite, quite a few scriptures here today, but I want you to see what I'm talking about. John chapter 20. And look at Jesus' resurrection. All right, they've put him in the grave. All right, the burial of Jesus, the first uh, verses 38 through 42, was it there? We find that Jesus, they've put him in the in the sepulcher, the grave, all right? And we find the first verse of verse 20, Jesus' resurrection spoken of. It says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene, who came to see Jesus first, Mary, right? Early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runs and comes to Simon Peter, to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. So we find here that Mary is the first to seek after Jesus. Amen? Even in the grave. She's the first to seek after him, right? Okay? And as the first, because of that intimacy and that closeness, that relationship, that unity, all right? In John chapter, uh, same chapter, we're going to look on down here. Um, in verse 19, in the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut... Uh, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst. Uh, so what do we go down too far? Nope, I went too far. Let's see. Verse 11. Verse 11. Okay, skipped over too far. This is where Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and seeth two angels in white sitting at the one uh, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I, not, I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not. She, first she didn't know him. And then Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, it's 20 in, um, in verse 15, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. So she's the first to actually see him once he has risen from the dead. That one that has sat at his feet has heard the word that he has spoken 
And like I said, the, he said it himself, the words that I speak are spirit and life. We must hear the word, amen, that he speaks. We must seek after him who is the word, amen, according to the book of John, all right, or throughout the word you actually find it. But we find that Jesus is the word, amen. He's, he's spirit, he's life. He says, you know, I am that I am. I am spirit, I am life. He goes on, you know, all the things. I'm the way, the truth, the life. So we see here, Mary sees him first, right? Mary's the first to recognize him, to understand that, hey, he's come back. This is who he is. He's here, all right? So we see then as that, as that one that would seek and sit at the feet of Jesus, that would sit and learn of his speech, speak of his word, amen? And learn of him, learn about him, who he is, and believe on him, amen, is that one that would see him, right? And we can go into a lot of things there. But as we look back, let's go back to John, I mean, sorry, Luke, chapter 10. Let's read on down here. Luke, chapter 10. Sorry. Luke, chapter 10. So she sat at his feet. She's heard his word. She's learned. But Martha, in verse 40, but Martha was encumbered. Um, that speaks of dragging around and, and distracted. And, and, and uh, like I say, the NIV says over-occupied and busy. Well, it speaks on that on down here too. But Martha was encumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. So we find here she's in a lot of striving and stress, right? She's having a hard time, isn't she? she she's crying out, I need some help. I need some help. I need I, somebody to take care of this. I need, you know, uh, Mary to do these things. So but why? Because she became uh, cumbered about. It's laborious. It's a hard. What happened when... Um, Adam and Eve in the garden, and Eve partook of the fruit, and then Adam partook of the fruit. We find that they, the sentence was that they would be, it, things would be hard. You're going to work now by the sweat of your brow, and it's going to be laborious, and it's going to be hard. You're going to struggle. There's going to be drought, and there's going to be striving, and all these things are going to go on. It kind of sounds like what's going on here with Martha, doesn't it? <laughs> See why I'm saying this? That is typified of the old law. That's what we were put under in Adam. Amen? But in Christ, what were we given? He says, you know, when they're asking him, what are the works? What do we got to do to believe? You know, what do we got to do and, and to work the works of God? And he says, only believe. Let go of all the striving. Let go of all those things and just simply follow me. Sit at my feet. Learn about me. Amen? And as you learn about me, you learn how to obey. And that's that trust. See how that works? Okay, it's all about letting go of all the striving, the stress, the fussing, the fighting, the carrying on, and all these things. Because we don't want to be like Martha, do we? We don't want to be striving and stressing and cumbersome and, and all these things going on, over-occupied and busy. But this is what we let ourselves get, don't we? We let ourselves get that way, right? <laughs> but Martha... Jesus answers, and Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. All right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he tells us something very interesting. 1 Corinthians, all right, I want to read it to you. Just one little verse here. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay. 7, uh-huh. And verse 32. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32. But he says, but I would have you without carefulness. Ooh. I would have you without carefulness. He would have us carefree. Maybe put it that way. How's that? That's easier to say, isn't it? Because what do we do? We get careful. And then we get worrisome because we're careful. <laughs> we're full of care, right? We're full of care. And we're worried about the things that we are trying to take care of. But how many know if we sit at the feet of Jesus, if we learn of him, hear his words that are spirit and life, 
and know that he, he is our God, right? Doesn't he say, I'm your God? I'm the supplier of all your need. I will take care of you. I will provide for you. I will make a way for you. All these things I will do. Amen. If you trust in me. Doesn't he say that over and over? I believe he does. All right. I believe he does. Now let's look at a story in uh, Luke 8. Here, Jesus heals a Gadarene demonic. All right. He says in verse 26, And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and, without, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou Son of God, most high, I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. All right. That speaks of, that's 3853, that command is to transmit a message. He spoke a word. He transmitted a message to him. All right. Uh, it also means command or declare, but basically it's, it's to transmit a message. All right to the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him, and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep or to appoint them. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them or allowed them. Then went the devil out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. All right. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus, and what did they find? They found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Hmm. Number one, he was clothed. Who clothed him? Jesus. Who clothed him? Jesus. He didn't have any clothes. And in his right mind. That's sound, sound mind. That speaks of a sound mind. A mind that is put right. Amen? Where did he get that? Where did he get all these things? Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Listening, learning, hearing, obeying. All right. And then goes on. They were afraid. And they saw, was saw it told by what means he was possessed of the devils was healed. All right. And you could go on down verse 9, 39. Jesus tells him, return to your own house. Show how great things God hath done to thee. And he went his way and published throughout all the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. So I just want you to see that example of sitting at the feet of Jesus. He clothed him. Amen. He took care of him. In Luke, didn't we read, he says even he takes even care of the lilies of the valley. He, he takes care of the ravens, and he takes care of all, all these things. You know, even Solomon wasn't arrayed as beautiful as the lilies. And the lilies, what do they do? They just grow. They don't labor and toil and struggle and strife and all these things. Amen? But even as beautiful of all the things Solomon had, I mean, a beautiful temple, beautiful house, beautiful, uh, beautifully arrayed. You can read all the uh, things, that, that how beautiful it was. But the lilies were beautiful. Jesus, God, arrayed them, didn't he? He clothed them. All these things. Um, he's wanting us to hear, to listen, to obey. To, you know, not saying we don't, but just to, to, to take more time. Don't get, let ourselves get burdened down like Martha and get ourselves over occupied or over troubled or over worried or any of these things you know I mean so i'm saying um so we could find martha you're careful you're, you're over occupied you're troubled you're busy you, you know you know you don't take time to do these things like mary's doing here and, and resting listening to me and hearing me and being a part of who and what i am 
But he says, but one thing is needful. Mary has chosen that good part. She chose the good part. Amen. Um, and which shall not be taken away from her. Now, we, we could look in, in John chapter 11. Let's just do that. Because we're going to look at Martha now. We looked at, at Mary, didn't we? Let's see. John chapter 11. We find Mary. Of all the things, Mary. Amen. Because of the intimacy and the closeness and the oneness and the unity, she saw Christ. We didn't, we didn't see Mar uh, Martha there at the tomb, did we? When Jesus rose out of the tomb. She didn't see her there. We're going to see her here in, in uh, John chapter 11. And we find there's a certain man, sick at his name was Lazarus, at Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. She so loved, I mean, she so loved him and so desired to be there with him. She anointed him with that, what they called it expensive, amen. Amen, one of the disciples even wanted you to sell it, you know. We could sell that for a hundred penny wedge. But anyway, we find here. So the sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus said the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. And when he had therefore had, when he heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. All right. So we can read on down. I want to get down to over here to Martha. And Martha says unto Jesus, in verse 21, okay, this shows us Martha. Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. Now, she had faith, didn't she? She had a measure of faith. All right. But Jesus said unto her, uh, but, but I know now that even now you whatsoever you ask of God, verse 22, God will give it thee. But Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. It's ordained to happen. It's going to come to pass. But Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise in the resurrection at the last day. Still have that little measure of faith, then she? She still has a measure. All right. But Jesus is trying to show her something. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said to him, Lord, I believe you're the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way. She believed he was the Christ. She believed, amen, she had a measure of faith, a good measure. Probably more than most. She had a good measure. But did she really fully believe he was the resurrection did she really fully believe all right let's scoot on down <laughs> when she went so she went away she called mary her sister secretly seeing the masters come and calleth for thee all right and as soon as she heard that she arose quickly verse 29 and came unto him now jesus was not yet come into the town in that place where martha met him the jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. And then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet. Where is she always at? Down at his feet, right? Worshipping him, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit, was troubled, and asked, Where have they laid him? All right. Verse 38, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone that lay upon it. And Jesus said, verse 39, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Okay? How many know that there's a lot of times there's a stone on the well. We need to get that off so the water can flow. Take away the stone. Martha, the, s Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord... What's Martha saying? By this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Now, what did Jesus, a few verses up, up, up or a few verses up, just tell her, I am the resurrection. I am the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I just told you that, Martha. Okay? 
But Martha says he's going to stink. He's been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou would believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hear hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Beloved, Lazarus speaks of beloved, beloved, children of those high God, I want you to come forth. Amen. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. All right. Verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, verse 30, 45, which came to Mary. Okay, Mary speaks of a higher realm, all right? A higher law, that higher law. Like I told you, the, old, the two sisters represent the two laws, the old law, the new law. Martha, the old, bondage, amen, limitations, Mary, the higher law. So then many of the Jews which came to Mary, the higher law, all right, the higher realm, the uh, intimacy, the spiritual, all these things, okay? And saw, okay, they came to Mary and they saw the things which Jesus did. They did these two things, believed on him, all right? They came to the higher understanding, a higher revelation, amen? And they believed because they came to that revelation and they saw the things that Jesus had done. They came to the revelation of resurrected life. Jesus just resurrected this man. He just raised him from the dead. Quickened him by his spirit. That spirit of life. Je the, the word tells us that that quick, that life-giving spirit, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, what does it do? It quickens your mortal body, right? Yes. They, just, they came to a higher revelation of that quickening, that life-giving spirit that Jesus is, all right? And they believed in who he is. Amen? They got the revelation. They that came to Mary. That Mary was the one that sat at the feet of Jesus. Mary was the one that heard the word. Mary was the one that obeyed. Amen. The word. Mary loved. Amen. The word. She loved hearing the word. She loved being with the word. See, we've got to, we have to, uh, I just just felt this, like I say, this, this, these scriptures already come to me as I got out of bed this morning. I hadn't even got my Bible yet to look at my Bible. And, wow. and um, all these scriptures, a couple of the, the major two, were coming to me. And I'm like, I'm going to look at that. And it's, he gave me these scriptures. But if we come as Mary came, come to Jesus. If we spend time in the word, the word is life. It's spirit and it's life. If we come to the word, come to him and spend and listen read it spend time in it amen meditate on it right then we're going to be as mary we're going to see him as he is we're going to see him as that resurrected life we're going to believe amen and walk in and we will be as he is in this earth amen, amen. we walk in the spirit we walk in the truth we walk in all those things and just as Whenever they drew those nets into the boat because of obedience. Because they got past that carnal mind that says, you know, it ain't going to do any good. We've already been out there in that water. We've already labored. We've already tried. You know, I'm tired. It's time to go to bed. You know, we just need to just give up for night. We'll try it again tomorrow. Isn't that man's reasoning? <laughs> I've labored at it. I've worked at it. I've tried and I've tried and it just, it just isn't working this time. But God. <laughs> 
but Jesus. Nevertheless, Lord Jesus, at your word, because I've tried and tried, but nevertheless at your word, because you have said to throw the nets out again, because you told us to, we're going to throw them out there. We're going to launch out into the deep end, and we're going to do it. And they drew in enough fish to cause two boats to nearly sink. Amen? That is the goodness of God. That is the rest of God. When we come to the place, and that's why I say it's our true test of faith, the obedience is our true test of faith. When we can come to the place where we're, we're taking time, we're spending time with him, we're spending time in the word, spending time in prayer, spending time in meditation with him, amen, on what we've read and learned, we come into that place, amen, of total trust, of total rest, where we're not striving to try to get this done or that done or that's whatever, you know, taken care of. He's taken care of it, amen? And that that's his that's his desire. That's his that's what he wants. Because he tells us he wants us to come to the rest. He provided a rest. Hebrews chapter eleven tells us that he's provided a rest for us. Amen. He's already provided a rest for us. He's made a way for us. He's he's given us the land. We could go into a lot of scriptures. He's given us the land. All we gotta do is come into it and believe that it's ours wherever we choose to put the soles of our feet and believe. Amen. It's ours to have. He wants us to come into a place where we totally rest and trust in him amen and it comes with sitting at the feet of jesus and he clothes us and he he helps us to have that sound mind and he's already provided it for us amen he's already provided the sound mind because we already have it amen we activate that sound mind by sitting at the feet of jesus amen and i a reminder to me just take time Take more time. I mean, we get caught up in the worldly things. Busy. Busy. Just busy because there's always so much. But it's a vicious cycle if we just keep doing the things we're doing. We need to come into the rest and rest in him. Amen? Amen. And all things work out. Amen? God is good. He will provide everything that we need. He is good. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right.